Hi, some people wanted to know if the $5 oscilloscope actually works. Um, I haven't got the screen yet, of course. You can see the screen is uh, missing. The uh, cable's just flapping around in the, gri in the breeze, but I've powered it up. And it's got a USB port on the back, so I thought I'd download the uh, software from JCAR still have it on their website, even though it's discontinued. I downloaded it, and um, here it is running. You can see um, it's pretty crusty software. Anyway, let me put this down. Right, as you can see here, um, it is actually uh, the function gen works. It's output in the sine wave. I'm feeding it back up as clacker into uh, channel one, and it works just fine. It's only updating once per second, and the digital scope software is really crusty. I mean, it's just, <laughs> this is how you interface with it. It's just absolutely terrible. I can't seem to get channel two up. I have not figured it out yet. I can turn channel one and uh, that off. Oh, no, hang on, hang on. Should I, do I have to, maybe I've got to enable channel 2, display, here we go, ah, off, there you go, that's why I couldn't get channel 2, there you go, hey, <laughs> yeah, figured it out, um, yeah, it is pretty crusty, and it took me ages to actually figure out why it wasn't updating, um, because if I turn the DDS, you remember there's that oscilloscope and DDS button on the front, um, that, uh, so if I turn that on, that will actually, st yeah, it'll stop updating. See, it's still it's still doing the updating, but the screen info is not changing. That's because in virtual panel mode, if I call up virtual panel mode, you can see that it's in the DDS uh, waveform view, which I think shows the sine wave that the waveform that we're actually generating, but that doesn't do it live so i've got it like the actual output is down here the output to, uh the <laughs> power you got to do power output which is on um and that generates the signal but anyway i've got a so now oh yeah now it's see now it's it's still not updating right it's not up updating the info i've got to actually turn that off before i'm not sure if how this is the scope actually how it operates but there you go we're back to updating now. So I have not tried channel two yet. So let me plug in uh, channel two, one volt uh, per division. Yeah, same time base. So we should get that on channel two. Will we get it on channel two? Does channel two work? Okay, yeah, the vertical's off and the uh, trigger is off. So if we go on channel two, scale, uh, one volt, if we go to 10 volts per division. Ta-da, there we go, it's there. And because the probe is set to times 10, yep, we have to change that. There you go. So now we're one volt per division. <laughs> Even though it's set it before, we, oh no, because it was times 10. Anyway, um, so now we've got a trigger off that. So if we go into trigger, main state uh, type mode, coupling, edge, slope source <laughs> see how painful this is we now go channel two boom boom we're in and channel two works a treat it's a bobby dazzler um this scope seems to work just fine i don't know what the upper frequency limit here is i, I what is it uh, i don't know um, so that's one meg can we go like 20 meg can we actually generate a 20 meg frequency no it won't, no, is 2 meg the highest we can go? 5 meg. Looks like 2 meg might be the highest we can go. Refresh. Hello? Nah, what's going on here? 100k. Here we go. No. Uh -huh. Oh, apply. You've got to hit apply. No, apply. Refresh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, it's not changing. It's not changing. I, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Oh my goodness. Can we at least change the type? Can we go to, um you know, ramp or something? Apply. Yay. Okay. So that, that, that works just fine. That's not square. Uh, <laughs> that's rectangular. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have to set our duty cycle, but... Yeah, this doesn't work for frequency, really. If we go, I I don't know why it's it's that like is that millivolts that doesn't change either. Wow, yeah, see, eh. <laughs> software's crap. 
I don't know. Anyway, the fact that we're able to get signals into both channel one and channel two and trigger from them indicates that like the front end is just fine. So <laughs> even though I can't figure out how to um, change this, this is just nuts. Anyway, what I can do now is if I hold it up in front of me like this, I've got an extension cord now, if I hold it up in front of me and pretend that's the screen, I can operate the scope via the front panel. I should be able to. Right, so my DSO is off, okay. So gen on, generator on. I just turn gen on, uh, sign. Right, so in theory, I can, yeah, I've only got the once per second update in. Yeah, I can go, oh, ARB, whoa. Okay, that turns the menu off. Oh, okay, right, I was using the wrong function buttons. Turn menu on. Okay, there you go. Should be able to go to ramp. Yay, this is working. Okay, so the frequency, I should be able to hit that third button. Yay! <laughs> and I should be able to adjust it with the knob. Yeah. Okay. There you go. It has got velocity control. The one time per second updating is kind of painful. <laughs> it's kind of painful, but I don't see anything on the uh, on the output yet. So obviously, burst continuous. It's not on yet, by the looks of it. Even though the gen on button is on. This is just ridiculous. I get desperate and push the auto set button because <laughs> it's so painful. Is it going to do anything? Wait, what? Whoa, <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, but there you go. Okay, it's working now. So we now have that on channel two. Yep. And like I can call up, say, the trigger menu button and boom, we're in the trigger menu button. Yeah. So, you know, I'm I'm starting to starting to use this thing. 80 nanoseconds it's got a 1248 sequence, which is not uh, your usual 125 sequence, but eh. then acquire. See, I can change the memory depth. I think it's this button. 20k, 40k. There you go. Look at that. If I call up the gen menu. Frequency. Hey, here we go. Here's my keyboard. This is really painful. How do I even move it? Oh, wow. With the knob. Oh, goodness. Oh. Oh, no. I hate to say it, but this is where I'm begging for a touchscreen oscilloscope. <laughs> oh, this is so painful. So, yeah, this is like, it doesn't even have, like, good velocity control. Like, I should be able to spin that a couple of times. Unsupported operation. Please down the Gen DSO button. What? To quit DDS first. What? Why? I'm in the DDS. No? Uh -huh. well, this scope's really weird. <laughs> anyway, you can see that it works. Um, Of course, you've got to test all of, you know, if you want to test it thoroughly, you've got to test all the uh, vertical ranges, all the horizontal ranges, but... Um, really, <laughs> you know, horizontal ranges isn't a problem, right? Obviously, the sample memory is working, so that's fine. And this is, um, uh, if you're buying like a secondhand scope on eBay or whatever, uh, then if you can see that it's got waveforms on all the channels, and then, you know, you, you know the acquisition hardware is fine, the triggering hardware is almost, well, at least the internal triggering hardware is going to be fine if you're getting a stable uh, waveform. Rarely would you get a fault you know, in like a trigger in between channel one or channel two or something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes there might be something wrong with like the vertical uh, channels, some, you know, lower ranges, you know, some ranges might be blown or something like that might only work on others, but that's fairly rare. Um, so if, if you can actually get waveforms and they're actually correct on one scale, it's almost certain that, you know, everything else is fine. And, you know, bandwidth, you don't have to test them at 100 megahertz. If it works at a kilohertz, it's going to work at 100 megahertz, you know, failures in like a bandwidth of a front end is, you know, that's pretty rare stuff. So, um, yeah, I reckon this thing is going to work a treat. The function gen seems to work and both channels seem to work. Haven't tried the uh, external uh, trigger input yet, but you know, it's it's almost certain to work as well. Um, and it's got a um, sync output as well for the uh, generator. So, 
yeah, that's um. So yeah, I I I declare that a winner. We just need the uh, screen for it, and that's going to work a treat. But yeah, this is a bit of a dog of a scope to use. I don't, don't recommend it at all. It's pretty awful, but you know it'll be great for a beginner. Um, as a first scope, it's got you know, function gen and dual channel 100 meg scope. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Catch you next time.